Yeah, that, that's the, that's why you have to file the waiver request. And and the and the the administration in our brief discussions has made much of the point. Well, we don't think the federal government will allow us to do this. But um, while seeming not to be interested in waiver requests to implement these common sense reforms to help us save the program, they nevertheless had no problem finding the forms to send the waiver request in to grow the program. And in fact, in Director Hamos's letter, if you read it. She's asked for an expedited review. We can't get a review on what everyone agreed on a year ago, but we're in a hurry to grow the program. And that just shows a level of hypocrisy. It makes me glad that we're on the third floor of the Stratton level, not the second or first, because we'd be drowning in the hypocrisy of, quite frankly, the administration and the Democrats saying, we want to reform the system. We want to make sure and save this for the taxpayers and save it for the people who need it, when clearly that's not their aim. Can I comment on that, too? I wanted to comment on last year in the House, we had the House Resolution 593 that we really pushed towards that because a lot of other states are asking for waivers because when the Federal Health Care Act went through, that's when everything stopped and you had to do the MOEs. So last year we said, could we have some flexibility? So we sent the Resolution 593. We wanted to get that out to send it to the Committee of 12 to say our state needs some flexibility on these issues, especially the com two common sense ones is what we asked for, the income eligibility and the residency, because a lot of other states are not in the similar fiscal crisis that we're in. So we just asked for flexibility to work with our state on that issue. And yet, even that resolution was denied, rejected. Thanks. Patty, yes, sir. Uh, last year when you passed this in committee, you were having a kumbaya moment with uh, Barbara Flynn Curry. Everyone was holding hands and saying we came together to, in a bipartisan. Have you talked with Barbara Flynn Curry about this? Wh where does the blame from your perspective lay? Is it merely in the Quinn administration? Is it also on the Democratic side and the House and Senate leadership? Uh, where, where is it? I think that the administration, we've worked in a bipartisan fashion. Barbara Flynn Curry was very active with Dale and I when we worked on the major Medicaid reform bills, you know, but the administration seems to have, um, you know, gone forward with this other waiver. And um, I did not pass that resolution out of committee. We brought it out on the floor. I think that resolution failed in committee, and then we brought it back up on the floor to try again, if I remember correctly. But anyways, the other things that we did pass in a, in a huge bipartisan fashion, yeah. So I think the uh, Quinn administration is, um, what we were really taken back by yesterday was the lack of discussion at all. We can understand that in the budget address, he would maybe move forward. But this is such a huge issue, especially after the report from the Civic Federation just a few days more, when we're looking at $9 billion overall of unpaid bills, but $2.5 billion of the Medicaid, that we just feel that with all that's happened, happened this week, and then the waiver issue in the Cook County. And not to say that other states haven't done that, a few other states have, but the bottom line is that we are in such a fiscal crisis that if the federal health care bill is struck down or does not pass, how would we absorb that 100,000 people already that would have been added to the program? I was going to ask, do we have an average cost per recipient and run the numbers to what 100,000 more would add to the cost of the state? Yeah, uh, about $2,500 uh, per adult. Uh, so, I mean, in rough numbers, you're talking about about 125 some $150 million. Is that annually? That's, that is annually, mm -hmm. yes. But, but in this, this funding is working a little bit different than what Medicaid traditionally does. The state isn't paying half, is that correct? Cook County is going to pay 50%? <laughs> well, and then the, the federal government will match that 50 well, I, I, and I understand the people who are out there pitching this are out there pitching the notion, and I, I want to be very clear about this. The notion they're pitching is you can add 100,000 people to the state's Medicaid program and it'll be free. Well, I, when's the last time we heard of that? When's the, well, we've heard that a lot, but it never turns out to be the case. The bottom line is it's, that assumption is predicated on the notion that the federal government's going to pay a tab and Cook County's going to pay a tab, but like Representative Billock, I mean, people in my district, they pay state taxes, they also pay federal taxes, and they care how much their governments are spending, not just in Washington, not just in Springfield, but in Washington a as well. Uh, the simple fact is, and if Obamacare does not become the law uh, in the country, and there's a good chance of that, then uh, we'll be stuck with that tab here in Illinois. 
I just wanted to make one other comment on that also. Besides that $100,000, we are already aware of with the Federal Health Care Act that we are going to be adding probably another 100,000 people to our roles anyways that we know to the tune of about $1.6 billion. So that has been out there for the last two years since the Act passed. But now when you are speaking with the Federal Government, when we ask questions, they are kind of backing off a little bit on the definitions of those people that they are adding to the roles and are they all going to be paid for by the Federal Government or is the State going to have to absorb some of those people that they haven't clearly defined yet in that Act? Are, are those 100,000 people in 2014? Yes. That is a different group than what we are talking about here with the waiver. Right. 